Hello, Condra. Oh, hold on. I think you're a little. Stop putting it. Hello, Cadre. It's a Saturday morning. Glad you could join me. Your old San Francisco Zoo mug here. I like it. It's got like a texture. This is kind of smooth, and these are the black is kind of inset in a little bit. Ah, not a bad way. Start the shave. Uh, Dave in Kentucky always uh, got one up on me here on a regular basis. Not every day, I know. But not only has coffee, but uh, a muffin supply, homemade muffins. That's weird. I don't know why I don't get motivated to do that. I mean, we, we, we see he posts all these fresh muffins, his breakfast of muffins, sometimes it's cookies. Um, I can make muffins, I guess. Well, I can make muffins. They probably wouldn't look as good as that. I bet his wife has some uh, delicious tasting recipes that uh, I wouldn't be using that would pop up on the internet right away. Um, I don't know why I ought to do it. It's just something, I don't know. Anyway, welcome to my shave here. Let me rinse off the handle of my brush so you can see it. This is a Paladin El Dorado handle. It's a, I don't know if it's coming through. It's pretty dark green handle and uh, this is a Neptune uh, pattern and, uh, so I listened to this well let me let me show you the rest of the the material before I forget to man I know oh man we got spillage on the floor and if you hear noises out there the house is a jumping my parents are coming into town so it is cleaning time they know what it's normally like but you know out of respect you gotta gotta pretend like you're and look at me look hold on I got lather here lather on the floor do I look like a guy that does like keeps everything in place and super clean this is why I normally shave with like that scrub top or that uh, pink shirt you wear that's just kind of like, I gotta get out of bed in the middle of the night, that's what goes on. Because if I use the one like this, Scots and Badgers, what? Not me, that's my dad's alma mater. There's a, the old W. Um, it gets all wet here where my rinsing and so I gotta shave all the way down to here. So there's not much, much margin there. So this ends up sopping wet and anyway, so yeah, they're coming in from the, the quaint little town of Portland, Oregon. I'm getting all ready for them. Oh, hard. Rest of the stuff. Holy cow. For a concerto. Saw this in the drawer. It's sunny outside. Should be decently warm. Now, I know there's a heat wave going on for us. In this area, this time of year, warm is like 70, 75. I love it. Um, but anyway, thought thought we could pull that out safely. So we got the old... Fern Concerto whole, uh, yeah, aftershave. And then, I, did I do a video? Yes, I might have. I think just yesterday. So I used, again, the Vector Merlin uh, with the Feather Pro blade in it. It was the sixth use for that blade. I think I said fifth, so I was wrong. So I pull them uh, SE blades after six uses. So this is now what I intended to put in there originally, the Chic P30. This is from my buddy TJ in the cadre. Poor guy had to, I think this was the third attempt at sending me these because apparently the post office in his area is allegedly a bunch of thieving bastards. Allegedly, I said, I can't get in trouble. So poor guy. So I appreciate that. Per most of the folks on the cadre that use their version of Merlin, the P30 is the blade to use in this. I tried it when we were doing the pass around. Amazing. So here we go again. You will not, I don't think this is probably, other than when I'm learning straight, it's the longest I've used a single razor in a row. So here we go. Um, so I listen to this podcast. Um, the podcast. <laughs> podcast is called Reply All 
and it's one of those that's hard to describe. It's just mostly these two guys, some sometimes a third for some segments. They're just kind of like normal dudes. And normally their topics have to do with um, memes on social media. Well, they'll do this like um, yes, yes, no, which means there's some meme that somebody doesn't get and two people get it. So they're the yeses and they have to explain like the history of things and all the stuff so you ex understand the meme until the third guy is a yes. That's kind of interesting. Then they have a, a segment called, what did they call it? It's something tech support. I just, I just had it in my head. I forget what it is. Um, but it's people with odd problems, not like how do I print this or things like that, but weird issues that really don't have an explanation. And these are not techie guys. So that's what, kind of what I like about it. They're just like normal dudes that are just interested in technology, this kind of stuff. And so they'll, and some of these have been fairly interesting. Well, they've had to go to several experts. The experts have had to research things and come back. And anyway, so they had just a, a call-in Q&A show. And uh, somebody's question was, why do printers still suck? <laughs> that's awesome because we've got a big fancy whiz bang printer at work you know networked and you're supposed to be able to do double sided and stapling and faxing and all that in color and it seems like especially if you want a double side print you're just like crossing your fingers and um, for quite a while we went through months where it's just there's no point in even trying so I thought, well, this would be interesting. Because that was their point. Why do they keep jamming so much? I mean, everything else in technology is advancing and moving on. Yeah, these freaking printers just keep jamming up. And the answer, so they, so they got a hold of some engineer whose job it is to work on trying to keep printers from jamming, you know, in their design and stuff. And it was a very... Like you say common sense, not common sense, but it. But once you, you once you hear it, you go, oh, that makes sense. Very logical explanation. And it's a printer. Printing is not like what it used to be. Printers used to be for what they do. No, this was what we have is a big printer, but it holds reams of paper, right? And it's got forty functions on it. Does all sorts of stuff. Look at that lather down there again. But back in the day, for the functions the printers used to be a lot bigger so you got a lot less space in which you're trying to get all these uh, functions done or just a basic printer is a lot smaller than it used to be so that makes it you know you shrinking all these mechanical parts down and it makes it much more likely for it to jam pardon me Dave and honor you um, so that's 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 the main thing the other thing is is that you print faster printers are faster now than they used to be so 20 years ago I don't I couldn't give you facts but if say a standard office printer is you know five pages per minute now it's 20 pages per minute so it's not that it jams more frequently or as frequent but it's that you know, if before it jammed, you know, one out of every 20 times or something, then that would be four minutes into it. And now if it's one out of every 100 times, that's a still, you know, a minute or two into your printing or whatever. But you get what I'm saying is that now the chances of jamming per page happen a lot faster. So anyway, that was interesting. It got me curious and I didn't find it, but, uh, the, the guy on the show that was doing the research into this said, you know, he saw some videos like inside a printer. And if you see that while it's functioning, you just have a totally different uh, take on how much they've got crammed into the space and how much is going on. So I watched a quick little video of how a laser jet 
works. I think most office-based printers at least are laser jets now. I think we've got the four color laser jet, which I think is kind of standard. And that's incredible technology just for making uh, prints or copies or what have you. So anyway, this, I'm, you know, here I am, I'm not even thinking about this shave. I can tell you this is going to be great. Nice and smooth. Um, this blade is a little bit, I would say, smoother on the neck area on this pass than the Pro. Um, so we'll see. We're going to go full blown. Um, let me add a little water. And we'll do those pass. Oh, there's hardly anything left anyway. I was going to say, I'm going to do those passes that would just rip up my neck before. Yeah, we're doing we're doing ultra BBS here. So anyway, I, I and realizing, I mean, it's I guess and that's why it's so freaking expensive still to print because every single color cartridge has, you know, this roller that gets um, not magnetized, but uh, uh, man, I'm not thinking of the right words today. I like the polar, it gets a positive charge on it, right? So you got this system in this little color cartridge it puts a positive uh, charge on the rotating disc and then you've got a laser that activates the image that makes it more positive and then you've got rollers that get a thin coat of the powder on it and puts a negative charge on it so then it jumps to the image that gets put onto the paper and then that happens for every color and then it gets uh, melted to stick to the paper. I mean, that's just, and for how fast that works now and the detail and stuff, I just think that's cool. Anyway, so if you're into nerdy stuff, I just like to know how stuff works, stuff I don't know about. I don't need in-depth knowledge, but I think it's fun to learn a little bit about a lot of stuff, just have a general idea of how that works. Anyway, so Allen Block. Oh touch sting down here for as smooth as this is going to be this is going to be super smooth that's totally fine given that i've gone like a week of using this razor with no allen burn i can guarantee that if i wasn't being completely absent-minded i mean i'm being kind of let me get to rinsing so i get this allen off my face being kind of flippant about um no attention. I mean, there's no no other razor I think that I use where I don't pay any attention. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about angle or pressure or anything. I mean, I was just whizzing it around my face. I would bet that I was using some more, more pressure than I should be. Anyway, that's the kind of shave you can get with this thing. Hold on, gotta get the extra soap off the edge of my bowl. So anyway, if you don't know, if you've never seen the detail of how a laser printer works, kind of neat to check out on YouTube. And I mentioned the last couple of videos getting into the fountain pens. Now I haven't bought a new one yet. I keep looking. But I just told my wife today, I was, I'm a little scared because I'm like, you know, this hobby's a bit out of control, but for the price point of these things is nothing. So I'll have to figure out what works. I'm kind of hoping that maybe I can do, get like one really super nice pen a year for like Christmas or anniversary or something, then just pick up two kind of nice knock arounds. Very interesting to see what's out there. So also Mr. Uh, Dave in Kentucky had a good point. At the last video I was like, well this isn't very long and I think I should have more to say. I didn't even think of it, it as kind of a duh. And do like he did, just make some shorter videos, put them out more often, then as things come up you can bring it up. So that's what we'll do, we'll just end it when I finish. So. 
Prune Concerto After Shave. And I'll show you the one of the best things about using this up and gotta, gotta spread the love all over. Now I'm only I'm not uh, dangerous donning this with multiple applications because here's the best part. Where is it? When you use a fern scent, you get to finish up with Penhaligon's English fern. Is this an EDP? EDT is this one. Oh man. Talk about scoring. We got the monkey. Psh. I missed with that one. Psh. Oh, yeah. And this is, you can't really, it's hard to overdo it with this one because the scent, it like projects and it lasts, but it's like a nice, mellow, clean. It's not going to be like, <clears throat> when people are going to be like, what the heck is that? Um, but I was saying, KJ on uh, the Cadre is doing this pass around. This is full of like, nice quality stuff and see like you take stuff out put stuff in pass it on he had pin Holligan's english fern soap which i've been looking for off and on for quite a while on ebay and stuff and i don't know if i just never found it or every time i found it the price is ridiculous but ironically a few days after that happened another one popped up on I'm not not equating the monkey taking it out of the box to this, but just to show you the value of this stuff popped up on eBay with an asking price of a hundred bucks. So again, that was quite the nice score, but this is all right. I mean, I would like, I'm gonna, I'll keep looking off and on. I think, um, I had no idea what the Penhaligon soap smells like, but the EDT in relation to Holy Cause, uh, aftershave and soap is even a little bit brighter um, I don't even know I don't want to it, it's got like a sharper note to it which I really like it's like fresher and kind of fern versus fern if that makes any sense anyway now we're into babbling so we'll cut her off have a good weekend see you on the forum